All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna actually start building out our AI framework, our reusable architecture pattern on using AI with the Power Platform. So let's just kind of walk this through organically and then I'm gonna focus on different areas. This whole lesson is all about architectural design and review. In the next lesson, we will actually use this to start building and chipping, this way, chipping away at it. When you initially get started, you're gonna have there's gonna be some things that you have to build at least once. So it's first time build, uh, and some of these services will be reusable. So we're gonna take the the hit on this project that says, okay, we don't have a AI service layer or microservices pattern for AI with the power platform. So we're gonna build that now with the understanding that in the next project there's gonna be a lot of reuse that we can use. There's gonna be a lot of services we can reuse and we're gonna have uh, UI patterns and business layer power automates that we can copy and paste, tweak, 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 make it their own for their next uh, power platform solution. All right, so this is what we have. So we have our project dashboard and basically this is our wireframe where you had like the dashboard, you have projects, you have meetings, you got teams, you got requirements, you got all this other stuff. In the project, you got this meeting tab that we're gonna we have the user click on. Within that meeting tab, just like we have everything else, you're gonna have this add button, and then you're gonna have this grid that's gonna have all the meetings, like the meeting history, right? Very similar to what we did with task issues and, and teams, so on and so forth. So when they click on this add button, what's going to happen is it's going to pop open this dialog. And we're going to break this out into two phases. Phase one, they're going to give us the meeting transcript. They're going to copy and paste that in. So you're going to give them this huge text box for them to upload the meeting transcript. And the meeting transcript is just going to be the transcript generated by Microsoft Teams for every meeting that's recorded. Right, so we're gonna give them a button to where they can click save and a button to where they can click cancel. When they click save, what it's gonna do is take this transcript and save that into a SharePoint list. In this SharePoint list, uh, we have several columns uh, that needs to be filled out. Again, all they're providing us is this transcript and when they click save, we're actually gonna save that transcript inside of the team transcript column, right? So that's a new row. So all of this is gonna be the transcript, right? So once that uh, item gets created, the transcript gets saved, we probably have to do a generic uh, meeting title one. So a meeting title would be the default title name for this meeting. And then we're gonna send it over to the AI. And when I say send it over to the AI, this is where Power Automate is gonna pick it up and this Power Automate, I call this the uh, business layer for Power Automate. So this Power Automate is going to be named something like um, AI hyphen meeting creator, right, uh, at the business layer. And this whole job is to high level, take this transcript, run it through the AI, we're going to... Um, and you, know, you have to grab the prompt and all this other good stuff that tells the AI what to do with this blob of data, how to output it and all this other good stuff. And then it's gonna generate an output. And basically, uh, and we'll talk through this here in a little, uh, it's gonna generate an output. I'm gonna I'm stop there, that's gonna be phase one. Cause we, what it is is that we gotta get these core pieces plumbed up. Uh, there's plumbing for each one of these. We gotta build this out. And then I'm gonna show you the level of complexity to where you can take it to another level. And you want to do that for this scenario because in that second level uh, that we're gonna use with the AI, you're gonna get a much better detailed meeting note based off that transcript. What do you understand that these transcripts could be transcripts for a meeting that's you know 20 minutes long, 40 minutes long, an hour long, 90 minutes long, two hours, wherever the case may be. So uh, from there, I'm gonna show you how to get a really detailed meeting um, note from that level of um, transcript. 
But for this one, I'm going to just show you the general one and our meaning uh, response is not going to be that detailed, but we're going to get something and it's going to show you how all these pieces play, right? So this mini uh, AI meaning creator is going to be um, in this Power Automate and I'm going to call this Power Automate the business layer. And this is typical software application structure, right? So you have a UI layer, you have a business layer, and then you have like a services layer. The services layer is where things get reused. Like, okay, reading the writing to a database, reading the writing to a, you know, API, reading the writing to a, a search index or, you know, or reading a search index, whatever the case may be. So there's a lot of plumbing on how you connect to these external sources or data sources. Um, and really the parameter is what makes it unique for your application. So you build that in a way to where it's reusable. That's why I call it the service layer. The business layer, this AI meeting creator, is really the logic tied to that solution or application. And that logic, though it can be replicated and tweak, tweak, tweak to make it different, like use it as a launching pad for your next solution, majority of the time it can't be reused without some type of tweaking. Um, so, it, you know, it's all the logic that makes this application different. So this is what we call the business layer. So here in this Power Automate, the first thing it's going to do is that this is going to trigger when a list item is created. That's going to be the trigger for that. So when you uh, they upload that transcript, it creates this new item, drop that transcript, saves it, then it triggers this guy. And from there, it's like, okay, first thing we need to do is that we're creating this meeting based off this transcript. So I need to grab a uh, the prompt for this. So this is where you grab the prompt. The prompt is going to be the instruction on how we tell the AI what to do. So in ChatGPT, you know, a prompt usually follows three main uh, st a structure and three main uh, segments. The first segment is that you give it an identity. The second segment is that you tell it what it needs to be done. And the third segment is that you tell it how to return the data to you. And this, these LLMs, these general language, uh, large language models are very smart but you got to give it nice instructions and instructions and you have to structure in a certain way to where you can tap into that smartness, right? So we're going to get into that when we talk about it. So this is going to actually present for us our first service layer. So hold on, let me label these because I'm, I'm starting to lose track with which each one of these boxes mean. So this is going to be our trigger, right? So the green one is our box when the item is created. The blue one is our subflow, our first service. So this one, the blue one is our service to get the prompt, right? So we're going to have, and we can name this like service get AI prompt, right? And then the input, this is what, and this is what I usually do. So anything that's an input, I put the hyphen in front. Anything that's an output, I put the hyphen on the end, right? So if it's the hyphens at the beginning, this is what you expect as an input within this reusable service. If the hyphens are in the end, this is what the expected output to be, right? That's just, that's a Deshaun Clark notation thing, right? You can use it. All right, so here, he was like, I ain't using that crap, whatever. So here, <laughs> so here, <laughs> so here is, uh, this is our subflow. And basically what this subflow does and this is the beauty thing with the beauty of a subflow. It encapsulate on how the sausage is made. So it's just like, hey, here's a prompt, and it's going to look it up, right? And this data source can change, you know, and that's the beauty of it. Uh, but for us, this is going to be a SharePoint list. And we're going to have a, a SharePoint list that's going to have uh, really prompts. It's a very simple list. Uh, the title or the main column would be the prompt key. And your business layer should know the, the right key for your app. So it's going to do the prompt key. And then the value is going to be uh, what's returned. So it's going to be the prompt value, right? Now, this value, this may be a, a rich uh, JSON uh, document, right? So it, it could be um, the prompt instruction. It could be the prompt output, right? Um, I don't know. We, we can grow into this. If it's... Uh, you probably want to make this decision sooner than later. Yeah, I would say it's just going to be one. It's just going to be one. Uh, it's just going to be one value return. And, you know, it, it will include both the, the input and output. The, 
the list itself, though, may have a separate column for input, and it may have a separate column for the output. The input, I mean, the, the instruction is that is tell it where, again, the, the same thing I told you. You give it a identity, you give it instructions, and then you give it output. I found it better when you're creating these prompts to, to separate the output from the identity and the instruction just from a, a, a usability standpoint. And again, these are not usability that the user will do. This is usability that like an admin would do that's creating this prompt. So because even though the input and the output may be two separate columns, when we return this back as a, a microservice or as a subflow, we're only gonna return one value back. And that's gonna include both the input and the output or the instructions and the output into that one string of text. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's why I love this, right? So if this structure changed, like if our if we get feedback from the AI engineer or the prompt engineer that says, hey, I gotta do a lot with this, um, it'll be great if I had a separate column for the identity, a separate column for the instruction, and a separate column for the output. We can accommodate them by splitting this up and still maintain our signature, our agreement, from a service layer to the business layer that you're gonna get one value and it's gonna include everything that you need to do. So we can, and that's why I love this. You can separate that that concern. Okay, so this is gonna be our trigger. This is our prompt. After that, we, um, we include the transcript. And when you see this, when you see this, basically what we're doing, we're building out our message array and if you're not familiar with that you will be familiar with that when we uh start to build this out because i'm gonna break it down like okay this is your message array this is how you pass information to the ai this is where you put your system stuff this is where you put your unique scenario item and this is how you process the json return back to the ai we're going to break that all the way down and get very granular and then talk about best practices for that Right. So uh, this is where we put our transcript. So the transcript that was passed in. Right. That value. This is where we add it to the message array for the, for the for the uh, AI. So this is our system layer for the message array. And this is what you call the user layer for the message array. Right. And then once you have this together, then what you do is pass this to the AI and with the AI that's going to be another uh, can I expand this out all right sorry I had to redraw my box um, so this is the transcript and then this is where we build the message array and then this one here is where we call the AI and when we call the AI this is where we pass it everything that we put together in that message array and with this AI this is going to call another subflow all right, so here I'm gonna say get response from AI. Now, we understand that the AIs always change, right? They're always getting better. They're gonna get better and better and better over time, right? So, and I'm saying all to say because we can easily call this, and I've done this, and now in some scenarios I regret it because when I, when I call this get service response from AI, I want this generic. And I want this at times to be the latest and greatest that's stable. So I've seen this grow from the various GPTs that we have in Azure AI, right? So, you know, we started out with 3.5 when I started this, and then that got upgraded to 4.0, then that upgraded to 4.0, I think 4.0 Turbo, then that got upgraded to 4 Omni, um, and then now we're into, um, I think it's iOmni or something like that, but this is slower. But then you have 4.0 Mini and Turbo and all these other ones, right? So this is it's con it's a constant chase of the latest and greatest. So that's, that's always going to be a thing. So what we're going to do with this one is that once we're comfortable with this, right? Because right now we're at, uh, this actually should be 4.5. So right now we're at uh, 4, if you're at 4.0, and if you're comfortable with this and you say, you know what, for Omni, it's actually, I mean, it's amazing. Like they release these new GPTs that are smarter, faster and cheaper. So it's like 
it be you know is you go against your budget if you're sitting with one of these older models that are not as sm smart and are more expensive than these new ones when when we, when the time comes we can just update the model here from 3.5 to 4.0 or 4.0 to 4 uh, 4.0 to 4.0 and all of our other biz apps that are using it remain unchanged and that's the, the other piece to why we engineer this in the way that we engineer it, right? So this is going to be a subflow, right? And the input of this is going to be the message array, the number of tokens to use on the output. So I'm just call this token count. And then the um, if it's creative or scientific. So I'm gonna say is creative, and this is true. This is gonna is gonna be creative in the point to where it can create things for you, uh, like blog posts and stuff like that. You don't want those to be the same thing. Uh, and if it's scientific, it can be pretty p predictive to say if this is false, that means it's scientific, and it's gonna be pretty um, expected on the output that it generates, right? Um, for many notes, I'm not sure where we will land with this one, but I think we probably want to be more uh, scientific, more consistent than we are with um, then allowing it to be creative. Okay, so that's going to be that piece. So then we have the AI and it's going to respond back. And then the output is going to be um, the AI response. And this could be, uh, and this is going to be a string, but just, but understand this, if it's a string, it can also be, uh, it could be anything. It could be text, it could be a number, it could be a paragraph, it can be HTML, it could be JSON, it could be anything, right? So the response is gonna be generic, like though it's a string, um, you're gonna have to hydrate that string and strong type that string to whatever you're expecting. What you are expecting the output to be is actually right here in the prompt. Right. So in the prompt, I can say, oh, yeah, generate these media uh, notes and then respond back with this HTML. And here is a template of the HTML to use in your response or generate these notes and respond back with a JSON. And here is a sample of the JSON we want to respond back with these notes. And that JSON could have one of the properties that's the HTML that has the body of it. And actually, that scenario is what we're going to use. So to keep this generic, it's just gonna have a response string. And then we probably will have another uh, tokens used. That's gonna be another property in that response. Um, yeah, and I think, I think that's it. But we can grow into this. So we can always add more to it, um, even if the callers are not using it. We just can't change the existing. But I think, and then again, this is theory, I think we can add more to it. And I'm going to show you how to protect yourself against uh, the output changing, right? Um, yeah, because there, there's a pattern that's, that's commonly taught, but it actually boxes you in if you're not careful, right? Um, okay, I think, that, I think that's it. I think that's it. And within this, within this uh, get response from AI, Another thing I love to do, and I highly recommend that you do, is that in the body of the subflow, create another list and call this AI logging. Or AI logs or something like that. And, and what this is going to do, this AI log list, and this is going to grow crazy, right? Uh, this allows you to capture key information when you need to troubleshoot or if you need to set up some monitoring around this. So basically every AI call that goes against your AI, you're going to capture um, what was uh, the message array, what was sent to the AI, what, how the AI responded, how many tokens were used, and what GPT was it using. Right. And you want to cap and this is just allow you to troubleshoot it allow you to monitor. You can probably 
you know, depending on how you design this, you probably would throw this like in the Power BI dashboard or something along those lines, or even, even, even run these logs against the AI to get other insight about this data, right? Um, you know, that's, that's, this is absolutely something that you want to do. You want to log all of these transactions so that you can gauge of where we're missing, where we need to fine tune, where the AI is missing, so on and so forth, right? Okay. Um, I think that's it. So this is our structure. Now, once we get this response back, we're only interested in this one, even though uh, tokens use. Actually, let's not do that. Let's not do tokens use. Let's because the to like tokens use is something that the the unless your app needs it, that's something that the app would probably use, right? In our scenario, we're going to log the tokens use here in the log. So now that we have this log and we talk through this. This is very useful information because sometimes you run out of tokens and um, that next level is how we design around that. Um, but the monitor and see like when we ran out of tokens where it was very aggressive in the summary because there was no room or maybe when things get truncated, which could happen, right? You'll have all that data here to make heads or tails out of it. So we don't need that here. So we're only going to have the string. Okay. From that string, we're going to, um, because we ex we're expecting a JSON, we're going to um, hydrate this into a JSON document. And then from that JSON, we're going to update our SharePoint list, which is this guy here. And remember how we created this item and we had a bunch of columns here, right? Um, and only in one of those columns did we have the transcript. Well, this JSON from the AI is going to have all the details for the other columns. So it's going to, so let me show you this real world. It's going to hydrate everything that you see here. It's going to give us the meeting title, the meeting category, and all of this is going to be based on the transcript. The meeting transcript is what the human provided, key decisions made, task items, follow-up items, and these are HTML, right? These are all HTML. So I'm using the multi-line uh, site column with the rich text enabled, right, for those. Uh, it's going to update the status. When this first gets um, added with just a transcript, we're going to set the status to processing. When the AI completes it and gets the response back, we're going to set the status to complete it. If it errors out, there's another one we probably need to add. We're going to set the status to error and then that way, if we have any details, like I, we have to look at that level of detail, like do we have messages and stuff like that. But either way, an uh, engineer would be able to look at the Power Automate logs and see the errors and then kind of decipher what needs to happen next. Um, project name, I don't think we're going to need this. Uh, meeting date, um, we may or may not have, maybe we'll start out letting the AI provide this. Uh, if it misses the dates or if it's hard for it to determine the dates, we probably will manually enter this in. The same with the length of the meeting and who were the attendees of the link meeting. And really, this is not going to be the people picker. Um, this is just going to be a plain text and probably have this like comma delimiter or something like that. Everything that we need from the AI in this way, we're actually going to describe it in the prompt. There is no coding needed. This is, this is where things change drastically from a development standpoint. If I want the JSON to look a certain way, I'm going to describe it in the prompt. There's no coding. When I went, so, and I'm going to give the examples, like I'm going to force it to do this. And because I expect the JSON to be in a certain way in Power Automate, I'm going to strong type that JSON from a string to a JSON object. And then I'm going to expect certain property names to exist. And then from those property names, I'm going to just map those values to these columns here in the SharePoint list. So the AI is actually going to do all of this work and it's going to do that work based on the data it receives from the transcript. This is going to be very, very interesting. I'm super excited to jump into this. I'll see you in the next video when we start building out our Power Automates.